lot of mobile games now are really heavily focused on the social and multiplayer side of things. Like for quite a long time, we've had maybe single player experiences uh, for all types of games, but but now it's opening up to to worldwide uh, esports to social aspects of mobile gaming where people can play with their friends and, and compete with each other. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, PC games have got even further than they already have to go, and and I think. The whole movement needs to come together, PC and mobile, and get consumers interested. And we've now seen esports on TV, like on, on the BBC and things like that. And people are selling out stadiums to watch esports matches. And as it comes over a lot more from Asia, uh, we're going to see again a big uprise in, in PC and mobile. So it's, it's up to them to work together, uh, both platforms. But for mobile wise, I think that it's, it's really great because with, with mobile you can have really short sessions, five, ten minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour, hour long and a half games like it has been for PC. Uh, and that really drives a lot more audience and really bite size uh, moments to watch and to play because it can be really quick turnaround times. I personally do a lot of judging of the gaming events, like such as uh, very big in the price here at the uh, Pocket Gamer. We did it last uh, yesterday and I see a lot of which is not unusual. I see a lot of growth of uh, casual gaming. So a lot of developers trying to get a quick start by developing a casual game and then to go from there and develop more serious games. Uh, that is a, definitely a trend. I see a growth of uh, kids apps applications as well and, uh, and so on and uh, monetization of advertisement grows with that in those, uh, in those verticals as well. And my, well, mobile more or less now is going very much into live ops, so we are seeing it as a provider, but also if you look at the top 50 games that is in the mobile industry, they all use live ops. So what is live ops? So more or less it's making the content personalized for the people who are playing the mobile game. So it means that you are with your crowd, you are with your guild, you are with your uh, uh, personality, and you will just want to grind more inside of the game. So with live ops, you're able to understand what is your uh, users, what, do, what did you want? And then you bring them that content to them right away dynamically. So more or less, LiveOps is here to stay. It's gonna be there for the next 10 years, 20 years, and all the way forward. And as we go along with uh, the mobile industry, uh, you're gonna see more of the indies doing that as well. And um, so I strongly suggest to anyone who are into gaming development, to start looking at how to make their game dynamic so that it can improve, iterate, and make it better for their users, uh, but also making sure that uh, the, to take the, the consideration of what is their community talking about, look at their KPIs, and have your gut feeling, and go forward with that. Yeah, yeah so we focus on real-time multiplayer, which is a pretty interesting spot to be in, because all the games that are coming out have uh, some kind of real-time multiplayer in it. So we see more and more games where people are interacting in real time, getting into the top crossing and uh, top charts. So this is what we focus on. And there's a lot of innovation going on. So you have all these specialist companies working on ad tech, working on analytics, working on real time multiplayer. And um, real time multiplayer is pretty interesting right now. And we've developed a new technology uh, based on determinism. And this is uh, changing pretty much how you build multiplayer um, and what type of games you can build. So it has been very hard in the past to build like a soccer game in real time. And um, let's say we've invented a product that makes it kind of relatively simple to do these type of games. And we think we will disrupt this market by providing this. We already work with Actually, Photon is used by 250,000 developers. Now we have we see a couple of thousand signups every month. Um, yeah, and I think we will uh, see uh, a lot of uh, disruption happening in that market in the next uh, two years. Yeah, I mean, mobile is just an incredible space. The fact that everybody has these devices in their pocket is just amazing. I mean, I used to work uh, quite a lot in the mobile space uh, four or five years ago, and just the graphics capability then compared to what they've got now is incredible. I mean, some of these casual games and the fact you can just pick them up any time and play them is just amazing. The stuff with AR and VR with the gear and just adds a whole other element to the whole mobile platform. And I think 
there's a lot of scope there for people to to use that you know and I've seen some great AR games here and um, the VR side of things is looking really promising I think VR is just such a unique experience I remember the first time I went in it I was amazed and I, I knew there was something in this platform um, and I think there's still a way to go. I think we need you know, better resolution, but you're talking about stuff that's very close to the eye, you know? And I think the technology will get better. At the moment, the barrier to entry is obviously cost. You need the space. It's, you know, requires a lot, but I think the mixture of the AR, like kind of HoloLens and, and the VR side, I think there's definitely uses for it. And I think certainly from uh, even, you know, it's obviously gaming, but from the industry side as well, from commercial aspects, I think there's there's a lot of drivers there that will bring that VR from training and things like that into into the home. Really, I think it will be something that people experience on the job as well as have it in the house. But as entertainment goes, it's amazing. You know, I'm 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 in. I'm hooked. So I cover most of the VR and AR for Unity for Europe, evangelism wise. So I've seen a, a lot of things change in the last three years. And when we've seen super high in PC, uh, like Vive and Oculus and, and PlayStation with Sony, uh, we've seen some amazing stuff and some amazing content, but we still need to reach the mass audience. And that's where people have been coming now to the mobile side of things. Like we, we've kind of seen high on this side and cardboard and daydream at this side. We need a, a middle ground and that's where uh, a lot of the companies are targeting that standalone device that you don't have to plug into a super high end PC. And that's where a lot of developers are now using engines and frameworks to meet that middle ground so that they can have really immersive experiences but not having to spend thousands of pounds on a, on a PC, a high end PC. Uh, and then with AR for me, that's, that's the future. It doesn't have to be entertainment and games. AR is gonna be incorporated into our everyday lives. And with mobile AR, for me, they're kind of like the beta devices. That's how we're uh, just making experiences for mobile and using just that frame to look into the world. But for me, it's going to be wearables. Like in the next five, ten years, we're all going to be wearing these devices in our heads. And, and mobile AR is just the start of that. We've seen some really cool stuff. Well, the thing I've been hearing about all day is the meta. That's what people are going on about. Originally, you would thought, think of games in terms of core loops or in terms of like enclosed narratives that you spend, like I don't know, five hours, 10 hours with like a traditional console game or something like that. With the invention of the free to play system, the idea that gamers will drop in for 30 seconds at a time, a minute, six minutes, and then keep doing that over and over again throughout the day and then throughout the year and for a number of years, it becomes less about the core loop, the little thing that you repeat over and over again, and more about the meta of watching the numbers gradually climb over weeks and months and seeing characters develop and working on like getting your customization options just so, so that your one in a million character really is one in a million. So a lot of companies are focusing on that in terms of bringing in extra revenue. They need to know how to monetize something long term rather than just go in, smash and grab and bail. That stuff is quite cold and clinical. As a gamer, I, I can't say that that kind of talk excites me really, but I understand it from a business perspective. My exciting area of mobile gaming, the reason I like certain games and the reason I think they work so well on mobile is the touchscreen is a really interesting and unique interface. It can do things that a DualShock can't, it can do things that a, a computer keyboard can't. Whereas like, you'll see a lot of people porting games from console onto mobile. You see the GTA games turn up on mobile for example and they have maybe 15 floating buttons on the screen obscuring practically any vision of the game underneath it which seems to defeat the object and it doesn't do the game any favors it doesn't do the platform any favors either because people look at it and go oh, it's crap on mobile isn't it and it's like well no because if you build your game from the ground up for mobile if you take a game like the room for example that series where it utilizes the touchscreen and makes it play in a way that you couldn't get on console, if you were using the room on console, it would be moving analog sticks to like rotate the camera or boxes around, which is nowhere near as intuitive as putting your finger on the drawer and pulling that drawer open, or reaching in and twisting the locks and turning the keys. That feels better than it would do on another platform. So the ability to ta tailor your content to the platform you're working on, that's the most important thing. So I'm not evangelical about mobile as in it's the best platform, but there are games that will work best on each platform. And I love those, because it's a unique experience you can't get anywhere else.